Welcome back to our Getting Started series. Another way besides the Edit menu that we can select an object is by using the Select Object tool. This is one that you'll use often. You'll notice that the hotkey is the letter O for Object. Learn this. This is another one that you will use all the time. Alright, so I'm going to select on that. And then I'm going to come down to my screen and I'm going to click and I'm going to drag a box. Now anything that is completely enclosed in that box will be selected. If the whole object is not enclosed in that box, it will not be selected. I'm going to do that again. Select, click, drag. Notice the pieces that is completely enclosed in my design or in my selection box. Notice there are some pieces that's partially included in that selection box down at the bottom. Notice when I release my mouse, those pieces or those objects that was not completely enclosed inside that box is not selected. So again, with the Select Object tool activated, I will go to the object that I want to select and I will click on it. And click on any object that I want. Well, maybe I want to have multiple objects selected. Click on this object, hold your control key on your key bar, and then click on the other objects that you want to have selected. These are the objects that you can make a change to. You can resize them, you can delete them, you can move them, you can change the colors to them. Notice if I had drawn a box around them that these other parts would have become selected too, but I really don't want that. So that's where your click and select will come in very handy. It is probably the one that I use the most often. Now notice that I can click on this heart. I can hold my control key and I can continue clicking down. So I can click on the first one. I can hold the shift key and I can click on the last one and it will select all the objects in the sewing order in between them. But look at this. I click on this heart, hold the shift key, and then I click on this heart. Yes, it selects all of them, but it also selects these other objects too. So what that tells me is that from this object, the first one, to this object, the last one that I selected on, um, there are additional objects in the design that will be stitched before that last heart will be stitched. Let's talk about selecting objects using our Resequence Docker. Now I have the Resequence Docker open here, and I have it open to where it is showing my colors. When I selected a red, it selected all the objects that is going to be stitched at that red at that time. If I had two reds located here, which I do, but this is a different red color, if I had the same red located at a lower area and I clicked on this red, it would not select the other one. It's, it's only going to select the red that you have selected in the resequence docker. Green, pink, black. Now this is quite handy because a lot of times you will want to select an object and delete it. Or you'll want to select an object and duplicate it to put into another part of the design because you're creating an expansion of this particular design. The other way that is works while doing this is that once you've selected this color, you can easily go in and change that color then. So if I wanted all my blacks to be changed to a gray, I could simply select it and make one more click and all of my black would be changed to gray. In the Resequence Docker, you also can view the design by objects. These are objects in the order that they are stitched out. I am going to select 
these two hearts. So I can click on it. It will select it. I can hold my control key down. I can click on that and it will select it. And then I can go and resize it. I could delete it or I could change the colors and a, a number of different things that I could do to it. So that becomes quite handy in different ways that you can select using the resequence docker. By the way, the resequence docker is available once you get to creator level. You will not have a resequence docker in basics and customizing, and your design will always be grouped in basics and customizing. So if you like to work with individual parts of the design, you're going to want to at least have the creator or the digitizer level. Thank you for watching. We hope you found this video helpful. Make sure you check out our other videos in the Hatch Getting Started series.